All right, let's get right into it. A massive deadline just passed for India's entire banking sector. You know, the one that plugs it into the whole global financial system. And on the surface, it looks like a huge win. But if you look a little closer, you'll see that a technical shortcut has just created a ticking time bomb. And here's the headline. On November 22nd, 2025, the drop-dead date for adopting a new global payments language called ISO 20022, the system held up. No catastrophic failures, no payment gridlock. India successfully stayed plugged into the world's financial grid. Pew, right? Well, not so fast, because that was just chapter one. The way so many banks scramble to meet that deadline has set the stage for a much bigger and, frankly, a much more dangerous challenge down the road. So yeah, the real story here isn't about the deadline they just met. It's about the brand new one they just created for themselves. To really get what's at stake, you have to understand the sheer chaotic pressure of that final push. This wasn't some well-planned marathon. It was an all-out, last-minute sprint to the finish line. I mean, just look at this. In August 2025, just a few short months before the deadline, the country's readiness was stuck at a pretty worrying 40%. But then, by November, boom, it rockets up to nearly 100%. A jump like that, well, it just doesn't happen organically. So how'd they do it? It happened because of some seriously aggressive intervention from the very top. India's Ministry of Finance and the Reserve Bank of India, the RBI, they basically forced the issue. They mandated that banks and all their tech partners work around the clock, burning the midnight oil to just get it done. It was a total brute force solution to a really complex problem. And that brute force approach? It led to a major split in how the banks actually got compliant. This created two completely different realities inside the Indian banking system. And one of them is way, way riskier than the other. So on one side, you've got the ideal path, what we call native adoption. This is what the big, sophisticated players did. Think HDFC, ICICI, SBI. They actually upgraded their core systems to speak this new, data-rich language fluently. But then you have the other side, a lot of the mid-sized and public sector banks took a risky shortcut. Translation. They didn't upgrade their core systems, they just slapped a cheap translator at the front door. And that translator is a piece of software called a middleware converter. Its job is simple and honestly pretty dangerous. It takes these brand new, incredibly detailed payment messages and basically dumbs them down so that the old, creaky legacy systems in the back can even understand them. Let me walk you through it. So, step one. A rich, structured data message, called an MX message, arrives from overseas. Step two, the converter gets to work, stripping out all the new, valuable stuff. We're talking ultimate beneficiary info, purpose codes, all the good stuff. And step three, the old core banking system only sees a stripped down, basic message, the old MT format. All that crucial, new data, poof, it just gets lost in translation. And this creates a nasty little thing called operational debt. See, the bank technically processed the payment. They met the deadline. But the most important compliance data isn't where it needs to be, in the core system. It's stuck somewhere else, in raw logs, almost impossible to use. They've just kicked the can down the road. And that road is about to hit a dead end. The shortcut they took to solve the 2025 problem has now set a new, far more explosive deadline for November 2026. This, my friends, is the data time bomb. Right now, we're in a one-year hybrid phase. It's a grace period where global systems will accept a mix of the old and new data formats. But in November 2026, that period is over. It's a hard stop. And one specific type of data is about to be banned completely. And it's this, this kind of unstructured descriptive address that is so incredibly common across all of India. Behind the temple, near the mall, you know the kind. After November 2026, any international payment that has an address like this written out in a single unstructured field is going to get rejected automatically by the entire global network. Instead, everything has to look like this. Every single piece of the address has to be broken down into structured machine-readable tags. Street name, building number, postcode. No more near the mall. The data has to be clean, it has to be granular, and it has to be precise. And the banks have just 12 months to fix this. This isn't a small task. It means launching a massive Know Your Customer remediation project to go back and clean up millions upon millions of existing customer address records. 
It's a monumental job, and the clock is absolutely ticking. Now, while the bigger banks are wrestling with this huge data cleanup, there's another much more fragile part of the system that's facing its own crisis. We're talking about the cooperative banking sector. Yeah, these cooperative banks, they have their own ISO 2022 migration deadline, but it's for the domestic NEFT payment system. And guess what? It's even sooner, December 31st, 2024. If they can't meet this domestic deadline, it could seriously destabilize their access to the entire payment network. It could cut them off from the very sponsor banks they need to even process global transactions. It's a real problem. So you have to ask, why all this pressure? Why is the Reserve Bank of India pushing the entire system through this painful, chaotic upgrade? Well, it's not just about ticking a compliance box. It's about a much, much bigger strategic vision. See, the RBI's ultimate goal here is to use all this new, rich data to completely change how cross-border payments work. They want to automate all the compliance checks, make inward remittances way faster, way more efficient. It's a huge part of their Vision 2025 plan. They see all this structured data as the fuel for a next-generation payment engine. And what that means is that their patience with the old way of doing things is running out. The prediction is pretty clear. The RBI is going to start penalizing banks that are still delaying payments because they're doing manual compliance checks, the exact kind of checks you're forced to do when you take the translation shortcut and lose all your data. So let's just sum it all up. In the old MT era, we had messy, unstructured text and tons of manual compliance work. In the new MX era, we get structured XML and the promise of automated filtering. India has successfully secured its connection to the globe, that's true, but now it's facing a super high-risk data cleanup by November 2026, and a whole lot of mid-sized banks are carrying some serious risk because of all that data they've been throwing away. Which brings us to one final critical question. The frantic race against the 2025 clock is over. And on paper, it looks like India won. But in reality, did they just trade one kind of deadline for a much more fundamental conflict? A war. Not against time, but for the quality and integrity of their own data. And that war has only just begun.